Starting ANSYS Workbench. So before we get started, let's go through a quick overview of what we'll be covering in this module. First, I'll be going over some of the prerequisites you'll need in order to continue with the course. I'll then briefly explain why we use ANSYS Workbench, and then I'll do a quick overview of the finite element method and how it applies to our problem. Finally, we'll start ANSYS Workbench, and then we'll go over the interface, the units, importing CAD files, and finally, the engineering data application where you'll define your materials for the analysis. Prerequisites. First, you'll need ANSYS version 17 already installed and configured, along with either a mechanical or structural license. If you don't know what any of these are, then you should please contact your ANSYS vendor for more information, as this course will not cover how to install ANSYS Workbench. Secondly, you'll need to have a good knowledge of the finite element theory, which means that you would have a solid engineering background, and you should be familiar with some of the governing finite element equations, such as stiffness times displacement equals force, as well as some basic knowledge of element types, such as the tetrahedron and hexahedron, and their node counts. So why use ANSYS software? Well, ANSYS is a useful tool to solve problems with complicated geometries, loadings, and material properties where analytical or hand calculation solutions are difficult to obtain. In our problem, for example, we have a lifting lug design with a bolted connection and multiple fillet radiuses and somewhat complex geometries. So let's say we want to solve the stress in every area of the system and find the location of maximum stress. It would be possible, however, it would be much more time consuming and less accurate when compared to the finite element method. So we also use ANSYS to ensure the design safety of our equipment. So we'll be able to answer some of the following important questions, such as, at what load will my lifting lug fail? And where would the maximum stress occur in the system? And finally, it'll also be able to help us provide design insights and optimization, which could potentially save us material costs and increase the components factor of safety. So here's a quick finite element method workflow overview. One will start off with a physical model they would like to analyze. They will then take the model and convert it to a 3D CAD model and split the model into many elements, hence the name finite element. After applying loading and boundary conditions, we will then solve the model and obtain the results, which can include deformation, stress, and many other types of results. So in our case, the physical model is the lifting lug, and the FEM model will be the conversion of the real model into a 3D CAD model, and then after dividing the model into finite elements and applying the correct load and boundary conditions, we'll finally obtain our stress results, deformation, and other results. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead and start ANSYS Workbench. So once you open up ANSYS, you'll be presented with a Getting Started page with some useful tips on how to begin a project, as well as a link to some helpful tutorials. I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck this for now, and click on OK, because I don't want this pop-up to keep on showing up every time I launch ANSYS. If you ever want to bring this page back up, you can always go ahead into the Tools, Options, and under the Project Management tab, you will see here the checkbox for Show Getting Started dialog. You can go ahead and check that, and then click on OK, and then every time you restart ANSYS, you will always get that page back up again. So when you open up a new project in ANSYS Workbench, it opens to the Project tab, which is just one of many tabs that can be opened in Workbench, but it's the main workspace in which you'll build your analysis. Like all tabs, the project tab is made up of different views that can be reconfigured according to the information you want to see. By default, the project tab has the toolbox view and the project schematic view. The toolbox view contains the types of data you can add to the project schematic. The systems are divided into categories, which can be expanded or collapsed in order to show or hide the system in that category. The analysis systems are ready-made stencils that include all the individual components needed for a common analysis, such as the geometry, the mesh, the solver, and post-processor. The component systems are the individual building blocks for each stage of these analysis. 
So one could create their own analysis system by using these blocks. If you decide to create a custom system and would like to save it, it will be shown in the custom systems category right here. Finally, the design exploration category right here provides tools for optimizing the design and understanding the parametric response of the systems. Now, these toolbox can be also be customized to add or remove systems as needed in order to personalize your workspace. And if you don't see any systems here on the left, then you most likely have a licensing issue and you should contact your ANSYS vendor for support. The mechanical or structural license that I mentioned before should give you access to the analysis system called Static Structural, which is the only system we'll be using for this course. So you don't have to worry about any other systems. Isn't that easy? Next, at the top of Workbench, you have the menu bar, which contains the file menu, where you can go ahead and create a new project, open a project, save a project, as well as Archive, which is slightly different. This basically saves all the project files into one single file, which makes it easy to send over email. And then if you ever receive that, you can also go ahead and click on Restore Archive, which will expand this, this archive project, and we'll go ahead and open it that way. You have the View menu, where you can go ahead and reset your workspace in case you made some changes you didn't like. And you can also go ahead and turn on and off some views that you don't want to see. Like if we want to hide the toolbox, we can go ahead and click on this right now. And as you can see, the toolbox disappears. If we go ahead and click on it again, we see that it reappears. We have the Tools menu, which contains some license preferences as well as ANSYS options. We have the Units menu, where you can go ahead and change your units. The Extensions menu, where if you go on ANSYS.com, you can go ahead and download some extra extensions, which can further enhance your ANSYS experience. The Jobs menu, where you can go ahead and launch a solve on a remote machine. And finally, you can click on the Help menu, and more specifically, the ANSYS Workbench Help, which contains all the documentation for ANSYS that you'll need to get started. At the bottom, we have the status bar, which shows ready and a green light. If this was red, this would mean that ANSYS is currently either loading an operation or maybe loading an analysis system. On the right here, we have some quick access tools to the remote job monitor, the progress, as well as the ANSYS messages, which is quite useful. So you can go ahead and check this box right now.